Yes. There are plenty of information sources, of, of, of course, like uh, catalogs gener in general, special catalogs, books, publications, journals, websites, et cetera, et cetera. So, so uh, uh, I will stop only on the first two topics, general catalogs and special catalogs devoted for stamps, postmarks of Lithuania, its areas, and so on. Uh, looking in the internet for the for the information about Lithuanian catalogs, uh, I found uh, uh, one interesting catalog. It was like a uh, uh, like a hundred and ten years ago printed catalog of about philatelic library. It means that uh, the total number of the pages is. 488 pages, pages, and there's only only list of uh, of different uh, different literature, I would say names or books, uh, and so on. So we can imagine how many information sources we have now, because it was in 1911. Uh, catalogs or sometimes they could be called like a handbooks. There are uh, a few types general, where the Lithuania is uh, presented among other states, specialized, devoted only for Lithuania, and specially devoted for the regions, of, regions or historical periods, like Mamel, Central Lithuania, like Elitova Srotkova, occupations, and so on. And specific catalogs for, for revenues, stamped postcards, covers, etc. Uh, so there is a list of uh, of uh, uh, how to say areas of uh, uh, how to say of interest in, in the Lithuanian philately, like a general collection, just Lithuanian stamps. Yeah, you, you, sometimes you can uh, hear the questions, uh, have you all collected all stamps of Lithuania? And the answer is something like, yes, I'm collecting just uh, numbers of Michel catalog, nothing else. And uh, besides that, we can, uh, we can uh, or many of us uh, are collecting independent Lithuania between two world wars. And uh, nowadays, Lithuania, beginning from 1990. Of course, uh, philately consists not only of by only from four stamps. There's a cover, postcards, postmarks, and so on. Of course, we can collect by the regions, say Central Lithuania, Mamel, uh, local issues, Telšeja, Moketa. That's a uh, Roma's uh, area, Grodno, Rasene, it's your orders, or uh, at, 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 and so on and so on. So, so at the at the very end, uh, I mentioned the name of Lithuania. Lithuania, it means the area where we, where we can collect everything that's connected with Lithuanian tema. That means uh, uh, foreign countries. Uh, they are presenting something about Lithuania. Lithuanian words, uh, flag, uh, mm, uh, uh, arms of coat, uh, and so on. So now a, a few words about general cat catalogs. I put in the first list like a AFA catalog. Maybe you don't hear about that. It's uh, uh, printed in, in, in Denmark. In Danish language, and uh, the uh, is used currency Danish kroners. Uh, and uh, here you can see two two bands from Eastern Europe. But it's a pity that because it's uh, in in Danish language, it's not. Uh, I would say uh, we can we can't use that. Uh, the another one, this is what so much Yes, you have some. Hello? Yeah. Uh, Sumstein, it's for Europe. It was quite popular between, uh, between the Second World War. 
and uh, uh, up to probably 1980, it's uh, uh, published uh, uh, for Ost Europe, among others, and Lithuania. Now it's stopped and, uh, and uh, uh, presents only Switzerland and uh, Liechtenstein. It's a uh, on in German language. Yes, the third one, Stanley Gibbons. You can see that uh, uh, until now, uh, Lithuania is, uh, this is a Lithuanian stamp on the cover and uh, is uh, uh, published uh, under, under the, how to say, name of Russia. Yes, nothing said about Mechel, the, the, the best known catalog in the world. And it is published plenty of them for several countries or group of countries like this one uh, I show you, it's a uh, Balticum and Finland. Uh, the most popular in English speaking countries is of course Scott standard post stamp catalogs. It's the, probably this one is the last one. And I have to mention also Evert catalog. It's a cover is for all the years, but it's uh, like um, for comparison, you can, could, can use it because it's uh, also, also uh, evaluated by euros. Uh, in general, the first stamp catalog was published in France on, on September 1861 and but there was no, no pictures and uh, illustrated catalog in December, 1961. Very interesting is that I, I think is this one. It's uh, like uh, uh, 20 years later, published, uh, published the first uh, the catalog. Of course, the inside was the all stamps issued uh, up to 1868. The first appearance of Lithuanian uh, stamps in Mekel catalog was in this one, Mekel. Uh, there's the page where you can, you can see Lithuanian postage stamps issued on, on 1918 and 19. And uh, uh, what I would like to say Plenty of mistakes, nothing, nothing, no truth here. No, but it was the first one. Uh, in uh, 1942 was issued the first uh, catalog in the same language uh, by uh, Joseph Ubertas. Uh, in, uh, it's the, uh, uh, the Lithuania was at that time under the occupation of Nazis. So it was difficult times, but, uh, but uh, Lithuanian uh, philatelists found possibility to, to print it. Here is the one page from this catalog. You can, you can see. In general, the numbers uh, are uh, co coincident with Michael catalog, but uh, this catalog lists uh, two stamps more than usually. For example, uh, here we can see uh, uh, usually <clears throat> in the in Michel catalog, uh, white coast stamp has number 404 and here is 406. I, I listed it in, in details and look, what's the matter? What is that two two other stamps not listed in Mekel. And it occurs that, uh, that uh, uh, Ubertas uh, listed the double cross with parquet uh, watermarks as a separate, uh, gave for, for, for the stamp separate uh, number. And uh, another one is simply, simply a mistake because uh, the 25 cents uh, 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 blue stamps called like uh, Schlingen is listed twice. No, but it's, it's like a joke. Uh, after the war in Augsburg, 
Baltia uh, society or uh, or say philatelic association Baltia issued catalog of three Baltic countries Estonia Latvia and uh, and Lithuania uh, what is this interesting uh, that is is known like not only like a like a like a catalog but also given uh, and uh, historical background. For example, the same Vicus, this is a, a, a description in Lithuanian, English, and German. The same is for, for the Latvian and Estonian stamps as, as well. Well, uh, the best known postage stamps of Lithuania often called like a Grigalunas catalog because uh, the name of Grigalunas was the first one uh, in the list of uh, editors. Uh, among others, there was uh, Matuzas, Ivanauskas, Mulevich, uh, Dr. Daniela, and, uh, and, and uh, Kaziz. Or no, it was Kaziz Mielvedas, but uh, in, in, there was a name Lietuvis, uh, because uh, they were afraid that there will be some sanctions for, against him here in Lithuania at that time. Uh, it, it was uh, issued in 1978. It uh, looks like a, a, a handbook, but uh, a few years later, in 1985, uh, uh, was issued price list of supplement. That means uh, that means it became like a real catalog with list of stamps with varieties and uh, and uh, evaluation of stamps in 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 uh, United States dollars. At the beginning of uh, the independent Lithuania restored independent Lithuania in 1991. Uh, Willis Kowalowskis made a translation of, of this. Uh, and uh, sometimes there's a mixture of information like uh, is, is, uh, uh, like a uh, uh, compiler of, of, of this catalog. So in some places that is the translation and so on. It was very nice, very popular here in Lithuania. And uh, people uh, until now, they are using it. But unfortunately, probably the, the how to say the work was done in hurry, and uh, and uh, Vilos made uh, several mistakes here. Uh, in in in, in New, New York at catalog, there was uh, illustrations where were black and white. Uh, he put uh, here uh, added the uh, colored. But I don't know who was busy with that. Plenty of mistakes uh, with the with pictures and that text in the red pencil is uh, was made by uh, Vitotas Valentinas. He had sent me the, the copy of this book with the uh, with mentioned what is wrong and uh, and. Uh, Mm, I have used it for so several, uh, how to say, copies. I don't know, maybe six or or ten, uh, of uh, fill it, and we explain what uh, have to be, uh, uh, how to say, corrected. Uh, what's uh, ah uh, here you cannot find the uh, uh, stamps issued in 1941. Of course, it was very nice that illustrations were in color. Uh, in our, uh, you, you would like to say a few words about uh, Martin Beckstad Litauen uh, uh, handbook. Handbook is not, uh, uh, it could be like a, a catalog name because uh, its evaluation of stamps is in, in dots or, or, or stars from one uh, up to five, like a point, so that one is the cheapest one and five is like a, a, a rarity. Uh, of course, it was nice that uh, uh, he uh, here 
added also some historical uh, historical things uh, explaining what's and the why. That was the first part uh, issued in 2005, and in 2011 was issued the second one. Here it's uh, uh, it's covered the 1922, 1940. It's like a litus period. The first one for auxinus, and the second one for 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 litus. It's uh, uh, made in in detail, say. And uh, very nice. Probably many of you have this book. The second one. Oh, well, what to, to say about Michael? No, nothing. It's a simply, simply the best. But uh, uh, what's the problem? The problem with Michael is that, uh, uh, how to say, there are no many people knowing the German language, but in reality, all of us we can use it and read it because uh, because under under the pictures, that's enough to 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 know German words like uh, left, right, uh, up, down. It's like a, uh, what's the meaning uh, mirror printed and so on. So. But uh, uh, Michael have some feeling that uh, that's uh, not enough to have it uh, in 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 uh, in German, and he issued an introduction for English speaking readers, like uh, like uh, he helped with the main words uh, to to help uh, readers to understand what is written in German. Well, uh, now about uh, regions. Central Lithuania. Central Lithuania is listed uh, in the catalog issued by uh, by Fisher. It's quite popular catalog. Among uh, this one, there are a few other, but in this one is pretty good uh, listing of uh, of uh, stamps of Central Lithuania, uh, particularly with uh, some varieties. Of course, the, the best one, the best one, in, in my opinion, is a, a specialized stamp catalog uh, 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 published by Paholchik. There's uh, uh, everything or details uh, of uh, how it's not issued, uh, the stamps from, from waste and so on, quite detailed. I have to mention also the book of Gerhard Hane, was an inflation in the Litauish, Polish, Polish and realm. That's a very good book. It's not, not, not a catalog, but uh, uh, all those guys who are busy with Central Lithuania have to have in, in their uh, libraries. Uh, now about a few words about mammal. Uh, the specialized post stamps catalog uh, with Memel was issued at probably the first in more detail by Cross Company in 1937. Uh, it, it was quite detailed, probably, probably at that time was detailed all those numbers, varieties of, 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 uh, of uh, letters and, and so on. So probably they have used uh, uh, the book or catalog of mammal catalog of, of, uh, made by Ernst Becker. That's, I, I like it that because it was very detailed, even better than now special, special Michael catalog listed here. Uh, I have to mention that uh, mammal books of, and catalogs, among uh, others, this uh, uh, in, in PDF issued by, by, by uh, Aldous uh, and uh, John Nifus. Uh, it's, it's, uh, there's a written part one. In total, there are part three. 
and the very nice in details and the historical background and so on. I, I like it. Probably I was the first order of this of this book. Uh, there are uh, several several books uh, devoted to the mammal, uh, for example, just example, like a handbook catalog of, uh, by Heinz uh, Ludwig. Uh, uh, like a mammal gebiet, there's a, only postage stamps. You can imagine that uh, the same author has issued, uh, has published a uh, published book, quite a big book devoted to one set for 10 stamps, the whole book. You can imagine how detailed is, uh, is, is, is made this book. So, what else? Ah, June is yours. Uh, I, th I think that the, the best, uh, the best, uh, how's the listing of those stamps uh, are in Do Deutschland Special Catalog, uh, which is issued, I don't know, probably every two years. But among this one, I could recommend you, if you are interested in this one, it's, a, it's a hard to uh, read, but it's uh, from, uh, from, there was issued by uh, Gartner uh, uh, company for the auction. And inside we can find very few, very, very nice listing of, uh, of stamps uh, and covers from, from that period of, 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 of Lithuanian, I would say, postal history. Uh, uh, a few words about displayed uh, persons' camp stamps. Uh, 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 the problem is that, uh, uh, for example, uh, po Polish and uh, other countries uh, have, uh, have how to say, they, they have uh, like, um, those stamps were like official one, but not uh, Lithuanian one. And many of uh, collectors uh, uh, decide like uh, those uh, stamps were issued by, by Lithuanians in, in, in Germany. Uh, it's like a, like a Cinderella, it's, it's not so. Uh, there is a good listing of, of those stamps. Uh, stamped postcards. Uh, stamped postcards were issued uh, in Lithuania from the in 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 the uh, third uh, decade of last century, and the first uh, quite detailed uh, catalog in Lithuanian language was published in 1992 by uh, uh, Algis Preiksha. Uh, from Kaunas and Justina Sajalska from Mariampole. It's, uh, of course, they have some mistakes, but, uh, uh, but the first one, of course, it's uh, the first one, yeah. Later on, it's 2003, uh, uh, Richard Dasweiner from Kaunas published uh, also the same, but a, a little bit a different manner. You can find uh, all those stamped postcards uh, listed uh, in this catalog, in this part. It's, your, it's a Gansachen cat catalog uh, with uh, uh, 1960 here. And uh, for English speaking philatelists, uh, could use the Higgins and Gage World Postal Stationery Catalog. There is the part from Elf Lagos to Luxembourg, and between there is the Lithuanian stamped postcards. <clears throat> uh, what else? Ah, postmark catalogs. Well, uh, I would like to say that the first one uh, of uh, uh, postmark catalog was issued by Kazis Milvedas in 1975 in Kaunas. Uh, it was uh, without uh, pictures, but uh, the description of, and uh, the data of, of usage and so on. I like it. Uh, I have not to, uh, to explain you what is this. 
Mr. Vitor Dasfugalavichos issued a uh, uh, book, very nice book, in, 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 in three languages, Lithuanian, German, and, uh, and, and English, posted postmarks. You can see here that there was the, like a, a, a date and special and, uh, and the post wagons and so on. Uh, the last one uh, you should together with uh, without us with Martin Ni very nice nice book issues uh, and uh, the, the pictures are one by one uh, it's a little bit pity that there's there are missing uh, some things like uh, 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 registration caches and, and so on so, but I hope that uh, that Martin with, with the Vito Tas will issue the or new version or or some uh, addendum here. What else? Oh well, uh, there was a, a, a small book, but uh, is uh, is uh, issued by Albina Sabromaitis. He was living in in Russia. And this was for, for the whole period up to 2000 with special uh, postmarks of Lithuania. Uh, you know that we here in Lithuania have uh, private post, uh, post companies. Uh, I don't know how many they exist of them at the moment, but uh, at the very beginning, there was like a 30 or 40 companies, they have uh, their uh, special, special uh, postmarks or, or cancels. So uh, Zenana Jabrowska's uh, printer, this, you can see this, this, the third one. It's a quite nice book. Uh, for those who are interested in details about, uh, about uh, the occupation period, can use this one. And of course, I would like to uh, Tobias Hulman's to mention Tobias Hulman's uh, uh, monography, like a Memel Gebiet Handbuch der Stempel. It's was for 1920 to up to 25. Uh, oh yeah, there we. Uh, you know that uh, we, under the Soviet uh, regime. Uh, there were some some uh, pictures, some pictures, uh, uh, so, oh, pardon, some stamps, st some stamped uh, covers. It means uh, uh, like a postal stationery, but uh, the, the catalog was issued in 1975 and everything was in, in Russian language. It uh, was, uh, and done by Mr. Carvales. Later on, uh, uh, by Nachunas was uh, was uh, uh, compiled the uh, postal stationery with post uh, postcards. It's like a like a on the front we have uh, some pictures of of Lithuania. Here you can see cathedral without statues here at that time. And uh, it, it is also, but it was for the whole for the whole Soviet period, beginning from 1960 to, to 91. Uh, Kostas Alexinas issued the catalog of covers. There's uh, like a, a, a special covers. Uh, issued by by Ministry of Communication of uh, of Soviet Lithuania, that means that uh, they uh, have possibility or they were allowed to to print to print post uh, posted uh, covers uh, uh, without stamps, but uh, with the Lithuanian tema. Uh, some 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 of us uh, they are collecting this. And the same, the same illust illustrated covers catalog in the language made 
argued as fallacious in 2002. What else? Yes, we are talking about special catalogs. I have to mention Zeppelin. Zeppelin post catalog uh, 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 issued by Seeger Verlag, where it listed all the flights uh, and uh, where it uh, was beginning, the end of the flight, the number of covers, and so on. As well, this uh, similar has issued Michel. Well, Michel is issuing everything, you know. Railway. There's the book uh, uh, compiled by, by uh, Kirushin and Robinson. It's a Russian, but because of the Russian, in the Russian period, it means uh, uh, Tsaristic uh, Russia up to 1918. And there is, you can see uh, Mr. Robinson, who has helped me with the English with my catalogs. The uh, head Baltische Gebiet uh, philatelistic group uh, issued uh, uh, its uh, uh, bulletin number 56, which was completely devoted to railway post in Lithuania by Jan Kaptein and Eugenius Urspras. Very nice. I like it. Uh, what else about revenues? The first uh, catalog of re revenues was uh, made by Raimond Lapas. It was in 1971. Uh, another one you can use, it's uh, Baltic revenues issued by Barry Food Company in, 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 in Great Britain. And uh, one of our, my colleagues is Vitas Ramanauskas is, uh, is compiling that is a uh, uh, own revenues of Lithuania. And now we, I don't know how many years it took, but it could not, how to say, go to the very end. Well, I have to mention another book uh, uh, by Srubas and Karpavichus. It's like, a, it's, it's written the catalog. In, in reality, it's a, a list of, uh, of Cinderella's. In, in the 1990 and uh, later years, uh, many of, of philatelists, they made the overprints on, on Russian, on Soviet stamps, on, on, on Lithuanian and whatever. So, so it's uh, not, 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 not stamps, but uh, how to say, somebody is, is collecting it. Yes, uh, after in independence, declaration of independence, there was some, some, some small catalogs uh, with the first stamps of Lithuania in, 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 in English, Lithuanian, and so on. The, 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 those were like official issued by, by Lithuanian post office. And the last uh, one was uh, for 1990, 1994. Uh, I have to, uh, I'll just list it that there are the covers of, 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 of my works. No, no comments on that. First one was just catalog. The second was used uh, uh, words specialized, like a special with details of the stamps. This one, like a orange one for 90, 2005. But it was like a, like a, no. I have to say nothing of this. Practically here, you, you can see uh, uh, almost everything. And uh, Raymond does not like it and say to so, oh, no, it's better, better to, to just, uh, the just small part, nothing else. But I put everything, uh, uh, not everything, of course. Not everything, because because it was impossible to put uh, put in one book everything. It will be much much heavier, more than two kilos, and then the how to say postage to to states or Australia will be much more than than the the price of the book, and therefore uh, in 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 in. I, in addition, I made additions where I put. Put everything which was not 
for what it was not enough place in the in the gray book. And uh, if you would like uh, to like to not to buy, but just to list them, you can use uh, here's the link where there are several dozens of pages where the, the, you can simply list uh, in, the, in this uh, issue come with Sanica doc, simply list how it looks. Well, the last one, the forgeries. The forgeries is uh, also tried to, to make uh, not heavier than two kilos. There's the, the, the contents and in both languages, Lithuanian and, and, and English. I, I avoid the, to, to, to use a, a name of like a catalog because in reality, all those uh, forgeries are, uh, are listed and they have, uh, have numbers inside, but not on the cover that like a, it's, it's, I don't like uh, forgeries at all. So I, I, I try to explain all for all our, my colleagues, what is it? And uh, the, uh, significant efforts of uh, others to, to put uh, on, on, our, uh, on our site, uh, the list of new found forgeries uh, is a very good idea. And uh, it's like uh, our, our fight, against this, uh, how to say, forgeries. Yes, the information about new issues of Lithuanian Post you can, you can find in Express Information in, the, in, uh, in www.post.lt. Express Information, the last one for, in, in, for, 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 for March. 117. It was uh, uh, issued also in in, Jam in 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 English, yes, uh, and and just to 111. So the last one was September 2019, but I don't know why. But it's uh, now it's issued only in Lithuanian. It was it is Peter, of course. You can use uh, uh, how to say internet sites. There is a very, very nice, I, I like it. It's like colnet.com. It's uh, stamps and countries. Uh, here, I don't know how many countries, probably all the countries are listed here. Under the name of Lithuania, there is listed uh, 1,641 stamps. And uh, with a relation with numbers of uh, lists of Lithuanian stamps in other catalogs and so on, you can uh, use it. Of course, I have to mention the, the site of uh, Jan Captain liter literature. There's the list uh, of, uh, of uh, columns. Uh, you can see everything is covered here. Simply you can open here and use it. You can find it. I have to mention also that it's like an information source. It was a, a Lithuanian exhibition, Lithuanica 2018. You can find like a perfect information about uh, Rasaini, about uh, uh, flight over ocean made by Vitali, and so on. I have to mention catalogs of very interesting catalogs of auctions. Say, you can you remember this one? This uh, uh, like a, there's a put there's a collection of uh, Matuzas. Uh, the next one, the Cherry Stone, is uh, is written like Kaunas collections. Kaunas is uh, in reality is the nickname in in eBay of uh, Lazar Sharas. He is living in states, and of course the the, the, one, the latest one was uh, uh, Heinrich Köhler, 
Dr. Matteo Lucibella collection, very nice. Uh, you can you can uh, not just participate in 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 this auction, but also use it in your for, for everyday usage. Uh, Lithuania. I have to mention this uh, nice site, Lithuania on stamps, where the everything issued can, with the Lithuanian tema is listed here. Uh, how to say? Uh, last, unfortunately, last update is uh, several years ago. There is the list of countries issued something covers postmarks, postage stamps, whatever, concerning Lithuania. And here are some examples of how it looks. You can open it and, uh, and look uh, what's, uh, and simply to, to begin to collect them. You can see how many, how many visitors visited this, uh, this site. I have to mention Bubni's uh, handbooks. The first one post in Lithuania up to 1918. It's uh, under the Tsaristic uh, regime. And uh, another one is a post in Lithuania, uh, 1918, 1914. You can imagine from, even from the cover, you can imagine what is, what is inside. Perfect books. As, what's a pity? Pity is like, a, a, there is no text in English, just in Lithuanian. So for many collectors, it's not, uh, I would say, not available because it's, it's difficult to understand because there's uh, quite huge books and there's a plenty of text uh, details. Uh, books were issued together with the Julia Norman. You know. She, uh, the lady was uh, busy, I, I don't know how many years she spent at the, at the work comparing those two books. But all the statements uh, listed here in, this, in those books uh, are with the, how to say, indicated from where this information, where those, that information was taken from. So, so you, you can go to the uh, archives and check if it's uh, everything okay or find something not included here. Well, what is missing? I found that the, what is missing such a book like this one. There's the brief catalog Deutschland. Uh, there's the prices lists uh, of, uh, of, uh, of covers in, in, in Germany. It will be very nice if somebody from, from our society will take a job on, on that and, and issue uh, like a cover catalog for Lithuania. It's for our young colleagues, it could be very good, good idea. In this catalog is included only two areas of Lithuania. It's a mammal and the uh, June issues. And that's all. Thank you for, for your attention. All right, so uh, Antane, thanks so much for your terrific presentation. I guess everybody will join me for a little clap. Uh, I found, personally, I found this presentation very interesting and useful. I learned several interesting facts I didn't know. So you definitely accomplished the goal. Uh, the um, the topic is open for discussion, comments, suggestions, anything else anyone wants to add. And while you are gathering your thoughts, I have two slides I would like to show. Let me see, let me first open it. Um, that will kind of add a little bit different um, highlights to already outstanding presentation which I think it was very, very uh, detailed in its uh, content. I'm, I'm very happy with that. Uh, Antanas mentioned that uh, basically uh, two current sources and the most recent was mentioned uh, barefoot catalog. Um, as far as the Memel and Kleipeda is concerned in this um, ebook, this is electronic handbook, which is, uh, was authored by John Nifus. 
we have a section written by uh, Andrew Capuchinos, and I want to show a table which actually summarizes how many revenue stamps each of the catalogs include. So basically, uh, the first was mentioned, Lapas from 71, included only 43 stamps. And you can see later, Norton mentioned, John Norton mentioned 128. Uh, it was updated 135, uh, John Barefoot, you know, 135. Uh, and the le recent John Barefoot was 155, while the Andrew Capuchinas list with the illustrations, basically it's a visual catalog, 172 uh, revenue stamps of the MML and, and clay pedal. So I think that is kind of, for somebody who's specializing in this topic, I think I just wanted to have this uh, information out there. Um, you mentioned, Anton, as you mentioned about the Lithuanic on stamps, which is terrific. I want to include one other website which doesn't receive very much attention, but I liked it because it helped me personally many, many years ago. It's a basically, uh, again, a visual stamp catalog, if you can call it, or illustrated stamp catalog of classic Lithuania period can be found online at stamps.adie.lt, uh, stamps.dlt. And you can see here, they all listed um, by, by their issues. Uh, both Mikkel and uh, Scott numbers are given for somebody's kind of collecting or adding uh, their collection of the stamps and finding a kind of listing in, in, in the Scott numbers. It's always, uh, sometimes it's difficult to cross-reference to Mikkel. So this is very useful. Uh, and also kind of gives you a visual, uh, you know, uh, information and also list some of the major issues. I mean, it hasn't been updated in a while, but it's a lot of information missing, but I think it's a good starting point, especially for those people that are starting to collect. For the advanced collectors, it's, you know, definitely, you know, uh, specialized catalogs, it is uh, important. I want to mention a work in progress that I'm working for several years, I never able to, to finish, is basically having a visual or illustrated postal stationary catalog and again, so I built this tool uh, with one kind of goal is basically, okay, I have a card and I simply don't remember, do I have it or not in my, in my own collection? And basically it's a, it's, it's a kind of a systemic uh, representation. Basically we have a 12 different uh, indicious and you know, one could look by the uh, nominal color and other things. So I think that could be potentially useful for somebody to, to get into collecting postal uh, stationery. So these are just a few uh, things I would I wanted to mention. And uh, that's, that's about it. Um, any, anyone else wants to comment, say something? Please do so. If I may. Labas Vigan, I'm sorry, you're late. Labas, I'm sorry for being late. Uh, I liked very much uh, Antana's presentation. And I would like to add that the first catalog, the Lithuania as a country stamps they listed, it was Hugo Michel catalog of 1919. So uh, I'll try to share how it looks like. Yes, that's it. Do you see? Can you yep. see? Yes, yeah. yes, we do. That's the earliest one. So it means stamps they issued in the end of 1918 and the first catalog was next year, already they there in the catalog. Just just uh, one, one. Do you have few few do you have by any chance a scan of the, some couple of pages showing Lithuanian listings? I'm just kind of yeah, curious. I have, I have, I have, I have. Just a moment, uh, across this one and now? Yep, yes. Yeah, as Antanas mentioned, uh, there are mistakes as well here. So I guess the next catalog 1920 was copy paste of this one and, and the same mistakes. Interesting, so only both uh, Vilnius issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Vilnius and, and uh, I guess it's a mixture of uh, first onus issue. Oh, okay. Vilnius issue. 
Interesting. So that's 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 it. What I can add. <laughs> By the same token, I can add about Central Lithuania. I think I don't have anything scanned, but I just got it off the shelf, and I don't know if you guys can see. That's a, a 1930 book uh, by uh, of uh, Pol Polish and Central Lithuania postal marks, and. Uh, And it lists the the Lithuanian and Central Lithuanian postal marks and overprints and goes on and on. Um, it's probably the first one I know that existed with the overprints and different uh, Central Lithuanian markings. It's, Italy, can uh, you read the title again one more time? Can you repeat the title? Yes. Catalog is Nakov, but Stowy. Okay. You read that? Yep. Yeah, there are uh, as well. Uh, you know, there are four volumes issued specialized uh, catalog of Polish stamps, including uh, provisional, including uh, Central Lithuania, including uh, stamps. Oh, 18th century, that's four volumes issued in 1960. I do not have uh, now and I, I can't, I have no scan and I, I, I do not have them here, but uh, at home I have. That That's very, very, very detailed uh, work and Fisher catalog in general was was issued based on, uh, on the previous one. Well, the one that I just showed is not very detailed and not very good, but it's probably the first one. That's why I kind of like it. Yes. And Tanis, I must say, excellent, excellent presentation. Thank you very much. You are welcome. <clears throat> Can I say something? Yes, Stefana, go ahead. Okay, again, thank you for an excellent presentation and thank you for making available online the copy of the, the, the recording of this presentation. I can give my contribution for the Italian area because this was my first catalog of Lithuania, which was a catalog I purchased in 92 93. It's written in Italian, so it is, uh, uh, as uh, you say, Russia and area. Uh, and that was just uh, a very basic listing of stamps uh, following the Evert num numbers. So it has got everything inside, but uh, with uh, black and white pictures and uh, no description at all. So the historical description is uh, six or seven lines. Uh, the description of, uh, for example, overprints of Memel is uh, very basic and uh, they uh, try to do something but that used to be a bit of help uh, for the Italian area because it was published by a group of Italian philatelist dealers so for of course uh, for usage of uh, in Ita on the Italian market nothing new but just uh, as a different source of information for Italian collectors Thank you, Stefano. Definitely, it's a good, good, good addition. Tanis, this was an outstanding presentation. I'm just a beginner, but I learned so much and I took lots of notes and I look forward to listening to your recorded presentation. And it's an honor to meet you. What a body of work you've <laughs> created. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Antanas was very moderate when he kind of, uh, you know, introduced his own work. And this is definitely a, you know, monumental work and time and effort that was necessary to, you know, put everything in, in into one mm -hmm. volume or in, in, in the disciplines in two volumes. There I had it. You can hear me? Yes. Uh, uh, Edith, uh, as far as I know, yesterday was your birthday. I yes. would like to say you all, all the best wishes. For, yeah, it's a, a little bit oh. late, but uh, 
<laughs> oh. oh, thank you. How do you oh, say it in Lithuanian? Oh, yeah. Can you say it in Lithuanian? Happy birthday in, in Lithuanian? No, Grazos Gimtadienia. It birthday is Gimtadienis. It's a birthday. Yeah. Oh, thank you. First time I heard that in Lithuanian. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday, Edith, definitely. Uh, thank you. From, from, from all thank of us. You. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Special thanks from me to fantastic catalog. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. You know, since you know we're kind of chatting a little bit, I, I want to kind of have a question open. So what else is, is necessary for our community in terms of uh, you know growing the body of knowledge? And Tanas mentioned it would be useful to have you know, similar kind of brief catalogs of, of covers. Yes, absolutely, I agree. Yes. You know, the revenues, uh, Ramanowska seems to be working on the revenues kind of, uh, uh, which definitely would be very useful and interesting addition. What else would be useful to have for this community in general? Kas būtų naudinga mūsų bendruomenį, kas liečia literatūrą ar katalogus, kokios temos nėra pakankamai išvystytos? I guess it's hard to, 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 you know, to, to give a, a clear answer. Anyway, so, you know, keep, keep, keep that in mind. If there is, if there is something comes, uh, you know, you can share next, next meeting. I, I think, uh, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt that, Andres. To no, answer please. your question, what I've been thinking would be helpful for more advanced collectors uh, is uh, a uh, web-based uh, catalog of uh, uh, errors, uh, web-based catalog of uh, variants, uh, you know, um, uh, the, the stamps that are listed in Mihail or other catalogs as just a quick description under number and uh, B, C, D, and, and so forth. And uh, because it describes a, a slight double print or it describes a little uh, plate flaw, but uh, it's really hard to, if you don't know what it may look like, it's very hard to identify the stamp. And, uh, and if there was a web-based catalog where there are scans and everyone can contribute to that catalog. And if you have a stamp, a very, very rare variety, you can throw it into catalog for others to, uh, to, to see and to be able to reference to. And of course, there would be a moderator of that catalog who would uh, say, oh, no, 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 that's not what belongs to the catalog or, or but it, it's something for all collectors, not only novices, but for the advanced collectors to refer to, especially when it comes to unusual rare varieties and uh, errors. I, I completely agree, uh, Vitaly, with you. I remember uh, five years ago when John Nifus and I worked on this uh, Memel Kleipeda. Uh, John had the idea to publish, either electronically or in printed version, basically a visual catalog of varieties, exactly for the same reason you are describing. Especially if you go into Memel, you know, there is a mm -hmm. list of, 30 varieties. Oh, it's you know, enormous, often it, enormous. It, you know, and, and you know, it's just a Mikkel varieties. If you're gonna go and look at the Becker varieties and you know, those descriptions and you know, even we, when we worked on the catalog and we made several, you know, corrections and additions, you know, terminology, you know, you, you kind of translate into English from German and then you say, no, it doesn't make sense and you change it. So it's just a textual information and, and you very often you stare at the screen and it doesn't tell you anything. If you and happen inability, to have- in, Inability to visualize the, what you're looking for oftentimes discourages pay, uh, people from collecting that area. It, it's yeah. so hard to get into mammal collecting because there are just so, so many varieties and you have no idea what they should look like. Yes, abso I absolutely uh, agree with this comment. Uh, and, and the suggestion is, is, is very, very good. Uh, George Shaw, I have a couple suggestions. Uh, one would be rate tables. Yes, they are in some of the literature, fantastic presentation. 
but particularly some of the transitional periods. And it's very difficult from 1990 to know all the rate uh, periods, uh, both domestic and international. That would be extremely helpful for collecting postal history. Um, the second, and you may have some on your website, maybe for members only, would be uh, pictures of exhibits. Some of the other societies for Eastern Europe do that. Rossica does, for example, and it's password protected. And one that the Estonians have done an excellent job, but I haven't seen it for Lithuania, was they took all the Soviet stationery that was overprinted in the transition period of 1990, 1991, and listed it by envelope type, which is a way to back in what the topical coverage was with the provisional overprints on stationery. Uh, is there anything like that for Lithuania? Uh, Antanas, can you comment on the uh, Soviet stationery, perhaps? Uh, oh, I would. I would like to, to show the, what's the page from. Yeah. You are talking about this one? Yes. Well, uh, I can tell what's the problem. I, I did not list the, the, how to say, the, the covers mm -hmm. on uh, which the, those uh, other prints were made for one reason. Reason was very simple. Uh, initially, we had a list of, uh, of, uh, of covers and we pretty know that this was used for, uh, say, in, in Vilnius, another one in Kaunas and overprinted mm -hmm. with, those, uh, with those bars with, with the new, new values and so on. But when I heard in our club in Kaunas, uh, one philatelist is talking to another one. Oh, no problems. I put several hundreds of different, uh, <laughs> different uh, covers, go to, went to, to post office and asked to overprint. And lady in, in, in account did that. So, so there will be uh, unlimited number of different covers with, with the, how to say, the numbers of, say one or two or three, what, whatever. So, so I decided that it makes no sense on which cover what the overprint was, was made. So just, just the types from different, uh, how to say, towns and, uh, and the post offices. And limited this one. The Estonian catalog lists something like 1,200 different um, individual pieces of Soviet stationery that were overprinted as the other dimension of that. Oh, okay. I guess they were very ambitious. Yes. And I may have a couple of other references. I don't read Polish, but the masterwork on postal rates for Poland is two volumes, 500 pages. And um, I'll have to figure out where the sections on central Lithuania are. They have to be in here. And I'll forward that to you um, as best I can. Vigintas, you, you, you know, you covered some postage, uh, the, the, the rates in, 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 your, in your books. Yeah. Is, is it something that uh, can be put uh, as a separate publication or put online? What, what do you think? could help other people uh, as far as the, you know, rate tables? I think uh, the list of rates is in Montana's catalog. Mm -hmm. So if we, are, if we are talking about uh, period 19, uh, 1941 and uh, later on 1990 and till, till our days, if we are talking about uh, periods earlier, Zaris period, Polish period. So I have seen rates in Kapstein uh, site as well. 
So uh, I don't know if 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 do we need to, something in addition, because uh, all, all all the rates are listed in 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 in, in, in my book in Antana's book, but. Uh, talking ab about uh, special uh, franking, airmail. So mm -hmm. in, in 1936, 1937, it was uh, additional charges depending right. on destination. So uh, the lists, uh, I guess they, they, they are printed as well somewhere in, 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 in Canada, uh, Bulletin of Rossic or something like that. Uh, you know, post office issued, uh, uh, at that time, post office issued separate, separate book. It's, I guess, 20 pages, something like that. It's a list of all countries and, and, and uh, airmail charges. There are in short mail, there are some other mails, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's require a lot of uh, attention and, and knowledge from one hand. From another hand, it was some changes uh, made. So in, in, in post uh, bulletins or, or at that time, uh, or instructions, uh, it's, it's described quite detailed. But, uh, well, it's, it's definitely for, for future research and, and, and publications. I agree with Gintas. I have struggled with it sometime uh, as well. When you deal with express mail, when you uh, deal with uh, um, uh, with uh, in short mail, short mail that's mm -hmm. that's what the word I was looking for, yeah. And rates vary, and there is no no catalog, no table that uh, that I know of that I can refer to and say, you know, um, is it the correct franking or not? And then you know, it's it's quite difficult to judge because there is no much mail you can mm -hmm. check. Yeah. So, 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 unfortunately, mail from Lithuania is is here, I guess, ten times compared with, with Estonia and Latvia. You know, you can mm -hmm. find ten covers of Lithuania and easily one hundred of Estonia, Latvia, same same period, and that was uh, due to reason of of. Uh, um. <laughs> You know, before First World War in 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 uh, in uh, Latvia and Estonia, it was uh, a little bit different regulation than in Lithuania. In, in those two countries, the eldest son he was overtaking uh, ownership of real estate, so it's mostly land. And so uh, literacy. Yeah, literacy. literacy. Yes, and uh, the rest, kids, uh, the, 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 the parents, they gave them education, specialized education, some profession. In Lithuania, unfortunately, there was no such practice. Everyone, uh, uh, real estate owner, he separated the land to his kids. So it means if you have 100 hectares and you have 10 kids, so each gets... Wow. 10, 100, 10, 10 hectares. So there was no push and no, 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 no uh, uh, to educate the people. So in the beginning of 19th century, it was a lot of huge number of population not able to read and to write. Mm -hmm. And, and that determines, uh, you know, mailing intensity and, and, uh, as a result, uh, unfortunately, Lithuanian covers are much scarier than, than Latvian and Estonian. So that's my explanation. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the and, and then you look into uh, addresses. You see that that probably one four 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 mail is uh, is uh, related with the Jewish community and in Jewish 
community members they 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 they, they had better knowledge on 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 writing and reading so so that's and and you know our black dots of our history that the Jewish community and definitely their their own files were destroyed and Jewish community was 90% of them they killed in second world war so so that's why Lithuanian philatel and postal history is much scarce and for us it's a huge challenge when you participate in the international philatelic exhibitions because the judges usually they treat Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia as Baltic states, and that's that's uh, the same treatment. And then you look into, for example, provisions. Mm -hmm. It's quite easy to, to collect Latvian provisions, just question of, uh, of price. And usually prices are two, three times less than Lithuanians. And Lithuanian example of provisions, sometimes we know two, sometimes we know three pieces, sometimes the only one. And Latvians, it's, it's looking to last five years into uh, Henrik Keller auction and you, you, you can find the wonderful exhibition of provisions of Latvia. And Lithuania, you know, we are collecting and, 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 and uh, we have publications and it's, it's, if we will combine all collections of all individuals into one, that will be probably one in best case two provisional exhibits available in the world. So, so that's, that's it, it, we are in, in, in very, very difficult position compared mm -hmm. with, with Latvia and Estonia, unfortunately. So that's my opinion. Interesting comment. I didn't expect that. I was always thinking that, you know, we can't find the covers because uh, somebody else bought them many years before. No, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I understand that it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a good, good argument, Viginta. Definitely a good argument about level of literacy. On the other hand, of course, the, uh, you know, more challenges makes it collecting uh, more appealing and more, more, you know, exciting to some extent, right? Because if you know there are only one or two uh, specimens or, or, or samples that are available, it's definitely good, good feeling to have it in your collection. Yeah, and then and, uh, from another hand, you know, we are not writing a lot. You know, and 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 uh, Latvians uh, philately was supported very much by German influence and German people. Uh, Estonian philately was supported very much by Finns and Swedes. And there are a lot of research and 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 uh, a lot of just information. You know, uh, I liked very much. Uh, you know, uh, first issues of of. Uh, magazines in United States of America then in 1956 57 it, it it was short information that uh, one or another philatelist he bought such a cover and uh, you know with such a stamps and they found a number of my covers now in my collection they they're listed on that yeah. and, and I remember in, in 1956 yeah. first time was yeah. mentioned First day cover uh, of Dr. Vasanavich, 1956, as the only one known cover was mentioned that time in the publication. So, so uh, after a couple of years, uh, nobody was writing, you know, short, just short information that that such a cover was bought, such a uh, destination and and interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. you, in one another reason and then so information about Lithuanian you know postal history is 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 very scarce is 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 very limited we, we, we do not know how many covers what destinations and, and so on so about stamps yes now we have a number of publications and stamps are analyzed quite well and detailed and, and, and thanks to Antanas and, and, and some other people. But postal history is, is yes, what you mentioned is, is we have 
a lot to do in the future. Uh, last year, I had communications with uh, Thomas Lobering, just to add to your comments, uh, Begintas. And uh, Thomas is a, a, an expert on Estonian stamps living in Germany. And he was writing an article on early airmail uh, uh, postage, uh, airmail uh, postal history from Baltic countries. And uh, he uh, contacted me and asking, uh, he said, I had um, tons of uh, airmail samples from uh, early Estonian and early Latvian flights, mm -hmm. but I, I can't find anything airmail related from early Lithuanian uh, st uh, material. And, uh, and I sent him a few scans of, uh, of the covers that I had, and he was very excited because he couldn't find anything even just scanning, uh, you know, uh, auctions and, and all, it just very, very scarce. It, probably exactly for the reasons you described, Begintas. Excuse me, what about more? I can, add, I can add in addition, you know, uh, you should not forget that, that the mail uh, for Poland uh, and for Russia, Till uh, mid of 19, to, to Russia, till mid of 1920 was forbidden. Mm -hmm. And you know, all Russian, uh, a lot number of, of, of relations was uh, with people living in Russia. And number of relations were with people living in Poland across the border. And uh, limitations uh, on correspondence with Poland was since 1919 till uh, 37. So, so, so most of our correspondence is with Germany or USA. Even you can found uh, correspondent, early correspondence to Italy or early correspondence to, to, to you know, to, to, to some, uh, I'm not talking about Africa or Asia countries, which is, is extremely scarce, but, but even to European, to Portuguese, to Spain, I haven't seen any any cover sent till 1920 to Spain so far, and 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 that's that's uh, this beauty of our, <laughs> our collecting. Uh, so a lot ahead of us. <laughs> uh, talking about uh, articles, I would like to appeal to anyone that I that we need uh, articles for the upcoming issue of the Lithuanian Philatelic Society Journal. Vigintas, I hope uh, you will be able to, you know, to, to find inspiration and, and some topic. I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm sorry about it. Just kind of try to appeal and remind that uh, we are def definitely need a, a new material for the upcoming issue. Interesting discussion. Definitely, I'm 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 enjoying to 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 kind of broaden this this kind of uh, uh, literature related uh, and and catalog related topic to 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 discuss about in, in general what is what uh, more about collecting Lithuanian uh, about Lithuanian philately and specifically collecting covers and other things. I think it's a very interesting topic. Is, is there any way of finding sources of modern envelopes? You know, at the moment, I'm trying to put together something about the uh, how Lit near, near Lithuania, Lithuania to, to Rev2 came to life and uh, the origin of the correspondence from Lithuania in 1990-1991. So, Antanas has been very helpful. He sent me copies of some documents, uh, uh, articles, and so on, I've, which I've read. But apart from uh, Del Camp, which is uh, good, uh, but 90% there is cancelled to order, but not genuinely travelled, uh, where can I find letters or dealers which have stock of material of the 1991-92? Write me a mail. Write me a mail. I, I can send you a couple of thousand. A couple of thousand. Good. Yes. 
If you can I send have, me, I have boxes of them of material till okay. 19, till nineteen ninety three, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you send me your details uh, via uh, a, a chat, uh, your email message, your email address by the chat, we I will we'll do. Thank you. By the way, Odrius, you mm -hmm. remember in February at the presentation at my society, I will I have the second part of the presentation on the 15th of June. So if you okay. want, I can send you the link or I can send anyone. And yes, the, yes. the guys at the society asked me if I can repeat the first half because it was also plagued with that technological issue. So I think I will have a condensed presentation of the first half and the total new new presentation of the second half. The for general information, the presentation was uh, the country that lived twice. So it was uh, it is focused uh, more on the initial period of history of the country, which means 1918, 1922, 23 for the first part, and then. 1990, 1994 for the second half, rather than uh, a, a display of stamps uh, published over the years. So uh, if you want, I can let you have the link to take part. Sure, please send it. Okay, then anyone won't interested, but it will be very divulgative. I'm a bit ashamed of speaking in this context because it will be people uh, information that you all can teach me rather than anything else so you are much more expert than me in this sector it is i'm doing sort of presentation for the british uh, uh, philatelists which don't know a lot about lithuania and the stamps uh, stefano you again you too modest you definitely did a terrific job despite all the technical difficulties with the uh, you know the internet i mean you definitely had good balance of historical yeah. facts and philately related facts. And I saw the reaction of, of the local uh, philately club members. They were definitely like, you know, it was like eye opening for some of them. They would say, well, we didn't know, you know, those yes. things exist. No, that was, I'm, I'm glad you say that because that was exactly my my idea, my scope. And I hope that I will be able to keep the same balance for the second part. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's the, the collection is growing dynamically. So now I've taken the information for, from Vigintas about sourcing envelopes or something which I found mentioned, but I couldn't really find them or I couldn't, the one I have are not good enough. So I prefer maybe to get something a bit better for to complete the presentation. And uh, okay, we shall see. And also if you can, as a last thing, because uh, my wife had just called me five minutes ago and we need to go out. Uh, if you could send me uh, how to uh, join the uh, Lithuanian Philatelic Society (LPS). So next 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 month you will have something to report. Okay, sure. I'll definitely send you a, a, a link and more information about that. Okay. Having said that, uh, I close here. I say goodbye to everyone. It has been a very pleasant meeting, and a very pleasant company. Speak to you next time. Now I think I have to go out and, and leave. Thank you very much again. All right. Thank you, Stefano. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Anyone wants to share anything else? Any topic is fine. I guess I'll stop the official recording of, of the uh, presentation at this time. I uh, will edit out a little bit maybe.